Hey, and welcome back to a new season of reviews. Uh, I guess you noticed we changed the opening bump. Um, a lot of that has to do because there were copyright reasons on the other one. Apparently he copyright four chords of music, so uh, it wasn't an issue, but we just wanted to, to switch it up anyway because it's a new season, try to change some stuff up. Hope you guys enjoyed all our Toy Fair coverage. We saw over 25, 26 different booths uh, between the two sites, so between Cool Toy Review and then rebelsgum.com. You could see 26 different booths. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Some of them are shorts because there wasn't a whole lot in that specific booth. Some of them are, are longer ones. So please check those out if you want to see some uh, first shots at some uh, recently announced products and some new reveals. We're also in several booths as well and some things we didn't even know about. So that was fun that we stopped by. We always try to try something new at Toy Fair. Uh, so now that we're back in our regular season, we're going to be doing some turtles again. We're going to start off with some turtle talk after a great interview we had with Playmates. Uh, so Playmates did send us um, some new stuff from Mutant Mayhem. Uh, these are the battle packs. Uh, the, weird tracking these down. I don't see them a lot of places, and um, it's hard to find them <laughs> to begin with. I think I've only seen it at Walmart. I don't know if it's a Walmart exclusive or not. Uh, there are four of these. We only have the first two here. Uh, so you can see from the packaging that uh, it's essentially a character, uh, one of the um, the bad guys with one of the good guys. So it's this character two pack. And these are going to feature some different deco uh, than we saw on the standard line figures. And we'll compare them here as well. Uh, they're going to be a little bit more beat up. But as you can see on the back there, they have this whole um, thing where they connect and build out a diorama. So uh, the more you get of these, the more you can build. You can build up to, to four so far, and it gives you an entire street scene, sort of mimicking that mini fight they had on the street when they were taking over the cars with the characters. I mean, there was no brawling down on the street, but I still think it's pretty cool. I, I love modular things. Uh, if you watch Rebel Scum, I talk about modular play sets and being able to build something out. Uh, so this kind of um, fills that niche. And it also allows you to get two characters if you were going to get all the characters uh, differently. And if you like variants, uh, these guys are going to have a different deco on them than the standard characters as well. So why don't we hop in and start checking these guys out? Well, there's not going to be much from the unboxing side. Uh, there's just two pieces of tape on the top. So I don't think we need to, to show you how to do that. And then they're going to slide right out. And then we're going to get that diorama piece. Now, this diorama piece is just a thick cardboard stock. It's all pre-assembled. There's no additional assembly required. Um, so you can see here all the way around. That's it. It's just going to uh, hopefully freestand. Oh, I think there might be a... Yep, there's a little crevice in the back here where you could pop this out. Yep, and that should give you that backboard to sort of push it against so it doesn't topple over. But that's it. <laughs> that is your, your display here. Uh, so it's all pre-assembled. And we'll go with the characters. Um, I don't need to do a pan of the accessories because it's just going to be Bebop's main accessory and Donatello's main accessory. There's no additional accessories here. So I'm going to cut them out using the sprue cutters. Uh, trusty sprue cutters, easiest way to get these guys out. Um, Bebop's going to have an extra binder here in his foot. We'll just get that. Yep, and that's it. So he should be relatively the same. I don't expect a lot of differences here. I'll, I'll show them against the previous, uh, the standard line as well. Uh, but I'm not expecting a whole lot of uh, differences here on these characters, other than the paint deco, uh, which is going to be different. But you're getting two of these guys, um, essentially, with this diorama as well. So if you want a little bit more from the movie, uh, build out a little scene, then it, it enables you to get that. If you didn't get the standard line, then of course this is another fun way to get these guys as well. So uh, Donatello, a little bit trickier to get out of here than Bebop. He's got um, about 100 little clips, as you can see here. But uh, again, these are going to be very similar. We'll take you in here so you can see up close. Donatello here has a lot more cuts, bruises, and scrapes than his counterpart. And we'll show you that counterpart in a moment. Uh, he has all his accessories that are on his body, his fanny pack, his phone sticking out of it. Um, what he doesn't have are those um, earphones. And those came with the... Uh, the other, the standard release too, they were a solid black accessory that you could stick around him uh, as well. You had to pop off his head to get those on there. But uh, other than that, he's, he looks just like the other Donnie, uh, but he's got blood all over him. It would have been nice if they had, uh, and they kind of had that bruise on the left eye where he got stabbed earlier in the film when the, um, I think it was Raph's eye went into his thigh. So it has a bruise there, but it's not bleeding. But he does have little blood marks uh, all over him here. 
and then Bebop, um, you can see here Bebop, very similar to the other Bebop we showed you in that previous video. Uh, he has his gun here, uh, but other than that, he the differences are going to be the paint, so you can see some gashes and bruise marks on his stomach, uh, fun little gash mark on his uh, shell on his arm as well. Um, so I love how they kept those in there, uh, the, the turtle shell, so he still has that hatred of turtles. Uh, even though he's a totally different origin story here. Um, but yeah, that's really it, is the, the deco on these guys, and he doesn't like to hold his weapon in this hand. I'll try the other one. Uh, but that's really it. Uh, the deco between the two is uh, different, but very similar. Otherwise, um, much bigger than Donnie uh, in terms of width and uh, girth there, not so much a height, kind of similar on that aspect. So that is your Bebop, quick look at your Bebop and Donnie. Let's take a look at Rocksteady and Raph with the alliteration there. All right, same thing here with Rocksteady and Raph. I'm gonna pop them all out at once with the uh, with the insert here. And um, again, different insert. This one's a dojo and gym. And this one here can also have that pop out here to get that back part so it suspends itself. Um, so we could. Like it says connect, you could just kind of connect it like this. There's these little cuts in the top here. I'm not really sure what they're for because I didn't see anything on the box indicating that you needed to do anything special with them. Um, I guess they slide into each other if you wanted to. I don't know. It makes it look like there's some kind of weird vent system uh, that goes in between each one. But, oh wait, you know what? <laughs> I didn't see it, but here it is. So right here in the back, they have these little vents that you could pop out and I guess use to connect these things together so they don't separate. Um, there's little serrated edges here, so you should be able to pop this off without harming it. There we go. And then just like, uh, I think just like this. So then you, uh, yep, you just kind of bend it around and that's it. And all you see is this little vent um, on this side. So then these things are kind of connected and then you just have that little vent so it blends in, uh, makes it look like it's a little air vent on the side. So there's one of those in the back of every single one of these. So I guess you can go out infinitely <laughs> with these and just keep going uh, to build out the street. But uh, that's cool. That was hidden on the back there. Um, so just look out for that um, if you're looking for um, the way to connect them. Uh, they, I mean they're gonna stand up there either way but this just puts them in there a little bit tighter uh, than the other way. Uh, so same thing here, I'm gonna use my sprue cutters. I'm cutting Raph out of this prison he's in here, this is a toy prison. Uh, there we go, and we'll see if he can pop out. So Raph, again, is gonna have a ton of little things on him, holding full sigh in, uh, holding the character in himself. Let's take a close look at Raph, and Raph, you can see here, is gonna be very similar to the other Raph, um, like I said, they all, all the characters are here. It's the same mold. He's just going to have these blood marks. He's going to have these uh, like fighting marks on him uh, all the way around. Uh, does not extend to the backside. It seems to be just on the front, uh, not in the back of the legs, not on the shell, anything like that. So all the extra paint applications are on the front of the figure. And um, he has the same, he has less accessories. He's just going to feature his, his primary painted movie accessory here, which were the Psy. So you don't anticipate extra stuff from, from Raph here. Uh, Rocksteady is held in by several ties as well. Let's see if we get these from the back. Um, I find this is an easier way to get these sometimes. It doesn't mess with the, uh, the character. Because um, sometimes you could just get so close you end up risk cutting uh, the character or snipping off the paint. And I don't like doing that. So um, coming from the back is a great way to to do this, uh, man, some of these are just really tough. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Here's our rock steady, and we get a nice close look up. So again, this is exactly the same as the other rock steady. It's the same mold. He's going to have abrasions. He's going to have blood marks and scratches all over his body. Um, so this is just what is different in this figure. Uh, again, wrapping around to the back. He does not have any abrasions or marks there on the back of the arm, sure, but not anywhere else on the character. So uh, it looks like for some reason the, the paint is dynamically applied just to the front of the characters on these new versions. Uh, but we have our Raph here. We find a nice center of gravity. There we go. And then we have our Rocksteady here. 
So, um, I mean, you could arrange them on any one of these, uh, but essentially this is what your, uh, your display is going to look like when you get all your characters on it. Um, just up like this. So here we go. So why don't we come in now? We're going to take a close look at these characters and we are going to take a close look at this background and then I'm going to show you how they compare to the mainline releases. All right, you can see the backdrop a little bit better here, uh, but what I wanted to do is show you some of the characters uh, side by side, but uh, I'll clear this backdrop so you get a little bit of a better look here to begin with. And you can see that great little um, diorama that they let you build out here with the sidewalk, with the grades, some tire tracks, some trash thrown about. So it's looking like a city. Uh, so we'll start here with the turtles and I have the Donnie from the two pack and the regular Donnie. Now my Donnie has the um, earphones here on the side. So uh, you have to pop off the neck to do, or the head to do this, but uh, he doesn't come with this additional accessory. But uh, everything else is a, a little bit different here. The bow is more of an orange hue on this one a more of a brown hue looking more like the uh, the color it's supposed to look from the the film here so other than that the the paint applications on Donnie are just different so you can see the the scratches and stuff on here versus a more pristine Donnie right here so that's really the main difference um, like I said other than uh, the less accessories uh, with bebop it's gonna be the same here he's gonna have the same um, design the same accessories, uh, he's just going to have a few less, uh, and he's going to have that application on the front here. So that's really the only main difference is, is these paint applications. And I love how these are all designed. I mean, there's so much detail on them. Um, this, they did win Toy of the Year, by the way, Action Figure of the Year uh, at Toy Fair uh, from the Toy Association. So they were voted as Toy of the Year, and you can tell why. I mean, just a great amount of detail on these figures. Uh, again here, the abrasions and the blood, that's the main difference. Um, the weapons are exactly the same colored, so no difference on this one like we saw with Donnie's. And then last but not least, Rocksteady here. Rocksteady has everything the same except for those abrasions. Again, um, maybe just a little variation on the painting around the, the horn here, but that might just be from character to character too. I don't think anything is, is done um, differently, uh, it just looks, if I had to pick, I'd say it's a little better here, but, uh, that's really it. Everything else is pretty much the same. Um, just those additional abrasions there. Um, but I love, again, love this design for Rocksteady, this elongated snout. I think it's just fun, really brings out those, um, sort of animal stylings to him. Same with Bebop. So these are just really fun, uh, designs that they put on these characters. Uh, so that is basically the difference here in these characters, seeing them side by side. So you're just getting a more um, sort of detailed, uh, combative look to these characters that they've been in a fight versus um, the ones without the, uh, the abrasions on them. Other than that, um, you're just getting less accessories, but you are getting these nice backgrounds to them. So that's our, our look, a uh, close-up look at these figures. Uh, they're going to have the same exact articulation as the standard line, and we showed you the, that articulation uh, in our other videos, so you could check that out. Um, but you can see they, they're going to have everything you expect from a six-inch figure, uh, basically, all the way down to the ankles. Um, so see those for more, but that is your look at the similarities and differences between the standard line and these two-pack uh, battle versions. And that about wraps it for our look at these Turtles Battle Packs. Uh, so far, I've only seen them at Walmart. That uh, doesn't mean they're not anywhere else. <laughs> they are hard to find online. Um, but uh, we, the Raff and Rocksteady, and then the Donnie and Bebop, and then there's Leo and Superfly, and then Mikey and Leatherhead. And that would complete your set. No word if there's word Wave 2. We did not see a Wave 2 when Playmate showed us what's coming up on the line. We were able to show you the next uh, four figures in this line, which is Mondo Gecko, it's Wingnut, it's Scumbug, and it is Genghis Frog. Uh, there is a Ray Filet. <laughs> we cannot show you Ray Filet yet. He won't be in the Mutant Mayhem line. He'll be in the animated line. Uh, but he will uh, look exactly like he did in the um, movie. So not to worry. Uh, so you will get Ray Filet. <laughs> so they will all be there. Uh, so... There are other vehicles coming out. Um, 
and you may have seen that tease for the giant superfly, uh, the mutated one with uh, super superfly <laughs> or super duper fly, whatever he's called. Uh, so he's there too. Um, but there, it doesn't look like there's another wave of these battle packs. So this might be the only wave. Uh, but they did say they have plans, more plans continuing through the year to support this line. And it might go beyond that. Who knows? Uh, so that was your look at this other addition to the wave. There's a lot out there. There's vehicles. There are, um, you know, the SDCC versions as well that I believe were a Walmart exclusive. Uh, and they had totally different paint decos in there as well. So <laughs> there's just a lot uh, of different versions of the characters. I think they're great. They're one action figure of the year for a reason. They, they're just really well designed. They got a lot going on on them. And uh, they're just really fun. And they really capture that look in the film. Uh, so what's coming up next uh, in this season of reviews? We are getting into the holidays. So we're going to start a whole slew of reviews that are all themed toward our holiday gift guide. Uh, we might try doing a um, sort of an appendix to the holiday gift guide or some kind of uh, a companion piece where it will be a video. And we'll go through everything that's in the holiday gift guide. Uh, but we usually post that to our website with links to all the videos, the products we review. So we'll see what makes our holiday gift guide this year as that comes together. Uh, beyond that, we have a lot of different um, products we're going to be looking at from different producers, from Diamond Select, from 3.0, from Super 7, from many more. Uh, Bobby's going to be doing some more videos of different things that we don't capture. So stand by for that. Uh, there's a lot we don't do. So hopefully her help fill in the, the gaps on that. Uh, otherwise, as always, like, subscribe, and follow. And we'll see you guys next time.